The process of mummification went in eleven steps. After the man dies, the priests take him to the place called the Tent of Beauty, Pernefe, where he is laid on a bed. The first step is to wash the corpse with water, to remove any dirt. Then he was dried. And under the supervision of the chief priest, who wears the mask of an opus, the process of mummification begins. The second step is a tough one, the main aim of which was to remove all the soft tissues or organs in order to dehydrate them starting with the brain. They try to remove the brain in order to the best preserve of the body by inserting an instrument which ends with a hook and they put it up the nose and snatching down the brain until the brain comes out of the nose and they throw the brain away because they saw that it had no use the third step is by making an incision on the left side of the abdominal cavity and then they open it to remove the organs from inside. They remove the intestines first, and then comes the liver, and then the stomach. After removing all this, the cavity is now empty, so they could remove the lungs. And all of these were removed very carefully, because the organs would be reused again by the deceased after restoration. Also the eyes were hollowed and threw away. The fourth step starts. As after everything is removed, they would start watching the visera with water. Then they would pour on them palm wine because palm wine contains 14 percentage alcohol so they used it for antiseptic reasons and then they put above them natron which consists of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate and then they leave it for 40 days in order to completely dry to be covered in molten resin and then wrapped in linen to be placed in the so-called canopic drawers. It should be noted that only the heart is left inside the body and it is the organ that determines the fate of the deceased and whether he is going to the hell or paradise. The fifth step is the removing of the internal genital organs. For the man the external genital organs were nearly always left in position. In rare cases, such as Seti I and Ramesses II, they were cleanly removed with the aid of a charred instrument.
the sixth step is the most important one, which is dehydrating the corpse. But first, they would wash the interior part of the body with a palm wine, also for antiseptic reasons. Then, they would stuff it with milk and the spices with aromatic smell trying to hide the bad smell. And then, they put above him tons of natron to be sure that he would be dehydrated from inside and they leave him for about 40 days. The seventh step is stuffing the interior of the body with linen bandages sucked in natron for absorbing all the water which is inside the body. And during these 40 days, they changed the interior stuffing three times in order to be sure that he is totally dehydrated from inside. So after 40 days, the man is completely dehydrated. He would be shrunk and his skin would be very rough and dry. The eighth step is removing the temporary stuffing and put a permanent one with natron, spices and a malted raisin because it acts as a waterproof for the body from the air or water. Then they close the incision by sewing it with linen threads. Then they close it with bee wax and then they cover it with the without eye for protection because this part becomes very weak so they need to protect it. The ninth step is moving the corpse to the bed of beauty where they close all the openings in the body, the eyes the ears, the nose, and any other openings with bee wax. However, before closing the mouth, they would stuff the cheeks with linen pads to give him back his full round face, and then they wrap ointments on the skin of the mummy to give it its elasticity. Then they would sometimes put a hair wig and artificial eyes to make the mummy look alive. Then, the whole body would be painted by a layer of a malt raisin to protect it from air and water and the malt raisin that gives it the dark color. The tenth step is the final preparation as the body is now wrapped in linen bandages. These bandages varied between 16 and 80 layers according to the social standard of the deceased. Between each layer and the other, they would stuff the bandages with amulets and jewels. And that explains why the robbers were always after the mummies. After the last layer, they would then cover the body with a single piece of linen that would be tied around the legs and around the neck. And they put a shroud decorated with a representation of Osiris.
Lastly, they would allow the mummy wear the funerary mask for the car and the pop to recognize its facial features, as they are totally hidden under the bandages. The eleventh step, or the final step, they put the four canopy drawers inside their chest. Then, they put the mummy inside the sarcophagus, waiting for his final journey to the valley temple, where the funeral starts. The coming events are the funeral and the opening of the mouth rituals. Now, the body is ready for the burial, which starts at the deceased home and moves to the river, where the deceased is placed on the boat to be transported to the place of the burial on the west bank. In the funeral, men and women would follow the deceased carrying his funeral equipment. Among these are the canopic jars, which contain the vidra of the deceased. And the procession is followed by the mourners. And the more he is cried for, the more God would know that he was loved, and so he was a good man. The procession then reaches the valley temple, and the chief priest perform on the deceased the process of the opening of the mouse. In this process, the priest orders the different organs of the body to work in the afterlife. The priest wears the mask of an opus and holds the step sign and points it towards the eyes ordering them to see, to the ears to listen, to the mouth to eat and speak, to the hands to touch, and to the legs to move. This process was performed during the Old Kingdom on a status, but later on it was performed directly on the body. The mummy was then ready to be placed in its coffin, then in its sarcophagus. But before, a final look to the king can be taken, before he rests in his great pyramid, for now and forever.